Hey, welcome to video number 47 of Walker This Way with Hazel Walker, the queen of all things. B&I. B&I. I'm Mark Simmons and Hazel. I'm just doing a little light reading right now of the B&I policies brochure and on the back is the code of ethics. Mm -hmm. And I was intrigued by uh, number six here. And number six says, I will live up to the ethical standards of my profession. Yeah. But really, what if my profession doesn't have any ethics? What will happen? You know, there are some professions I firmly believe don't have any ethics. Yeah. But they claim to. Um, so we have a code of ethics. B and I has a code of ethics because we want to make sure that the quality of people we get into our organization have some ethical standards, right? But it also says that if, like the accounting uh, industry, the law industry and a few others have their own code of ethics that supersede ours, ours go along with theirs. So ours can't conflict with theirs is what we're trying to protect. Right. Um, but living up to your ethical standards is one of the things that allows me to build trust with you, right? So if I, don't, if I believe you will do unethical things and for instance, how you do one thing is often how you do most things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we saw a, v, a, a vice president, I had a vice president who was counting everybody on time and present in their meetings. Right. Even when, when you knew they weren't, but he was just not, he was just giving everybody the benefit of the doubt. So when I said to him, look, um, you do finances and I need some money, could you just like fudge some numbers for me? He was appalled, right? He was right. appalled because he was a financial guy. And I think it was mortgages even. And um, he said, why would you even ask me that? And I said, well, I noticed you fudged the numbers here on the attendance, so you probably just do that everywhere, or at least you're willing to cover for people. Right. And so I thought I might come to you for the for the help. And he had no idea, he was really quite shocked, like, right? He was quite shocked because he had no idea that the rest of the room who he thought he was doing a favor for saw that as an unethical practice. So if he's willing to do it here, where else is he willing to do it, right? Absolutely. So living up to our ethical standards means if you do something that appears unethical in the room, or maybe you're cheating at a game when you're playing football or hockey or whatever, um, how you do one thing is how I would believe that you would do everything. And so that really erodes your trust because everything you do inside your BNI chapter and outside your BNI chapter meeting is speaking loudly for you. Right. Right? It's yeah. either, and your word of mouth and, and your network is either working for you or against you, but it's always working one way or the other. Word of mouth is always working. It's either working in your favor or it's working against you. So those ethical standards are really vital that we see the very best of the members when they're standing in the room and when they're out in public. If I see you out in public doing something completely unethical, for instance, I saw a BNI member smash into another person's car and then drive off. What? Yeah, and, and left wow. it. So that said to me, there's a lack of ethics there. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's clear that these code of ethics came from somewhere. Correct. With reason. Right. They came yeah. for a reason. We didn't just make those up out of the blue. Right. These. So good side note for vice presidents. Uh, Pons report are actually legal documents. So they have mm -hmm. to be filled up properly. And also do things to help yourself, not hurt yourself. <laughs> Live up to the ethical standards of your profession. Yeah. Because the moment you think you're doing a favor for someone, you're actually probably damaging your own reputation. Correct. Yeah. Keeping it real.